Uh, my name is Reverend Aaron Godfrey Bate, taking you th through today's devotion. And a portion of scripture comes from Esther chapter 4, verse 15 to 17. And the uh, topic for today is the power of prayer and fasting. There are four things that I would like us to uh, concentrate on. These were sayings in this portion of scripture. One is gather together all the Jews. The second one is fast for me. Third is not eating or drinking for three days, day and night. And the fourth one is I and my maids will fast as you do. This portion of scripture, of course, we know the story is uh, of Esther. Esther is sent by Mordecai uh, into the um, the palace. Um, yeah, she had a mission uh, to help. And uh, there is a gentleman called Haman who wanted to kill the Jews. And um, Esther goes knowing what it means, the mission she had, not only for her, but also the relatives and the community, the Jewish community. And so Esther tells a response to, um, Esther tells um, a person to go and inform Mordecai of what they are supposed to do. One is to gather all the Jews. Now, remember Esther, this is the third uh, response that Mordecai uh, wanted to hear from uh, Esther. Esther gets his determination to go and see the, ki the king because of the people who were praying for him and fasting. Remember, he tells them, pray and fast for me as I go to see the king. She also understood the weight of the mission and the, the only way to overcome that mission was through prayer and fasting. Of course, we know that in Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, Jesus reminded, reminds us that in every spiritual battle, there are things that require preparation of prayer and fasting. The question for you I have as a believer, do you pray and fast? Do you have time to reflect on the word of God through prayer and fasting? So Jesus reminds us that there are those things that go through prayer and fasting. The second statement, she says, pray fast for me. She's determined to go to see the king even when she knew it was against the law. She says, fast for me. If I perish, I perish. But when I have achieved the mission. So she gets the boldness through the prayer and fasting and goes to see the king. This mission was either to live or to die. And so she knew the weight of this mission. And prayer and fasting, friends, is very important for us. You cannot be a Christian without fasting. You can't be a Christian who does not pray. So it's very important for us to consider prayer and fasting, especially you who are involved in ministry. Imagine you have a minister or a clergy or a pastor who does not pray and fast. There are things that go through, go with prayer and fasting. So Esther determines to go and see the king through the boldness that she gets from the prayer and fasting that she had and the members that she was fasting with. These are maids and the whole congregation of the Jews. Jesus encourages, encourages us to have such an attitude, a bold attitude. 
when we face temptation. A bold attitude when we face challenges. This comes through prayer and fasting. Jesus says, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the spirit. Matthew chapter 10 verse 28. Those you shouldn't fear. Because they just kill the body, not the spirit, not the soul. And so he encourages us to have a bold commitment. We shouldn't fear. We should be people who stand firm with the word of God. Not scared of anything. So Esther gets this boldness through prayer and fasting. Are you fasting? Are you praying? What challenges are, challenges are you facing as a Christian? What is your response to these challenges? Do you run off like many? Do you go turn to drinking? Do you turn to friends? Or you turn through you turn to prayer and fasting? This is a commitment that each and every believer is to have. What are those issues? That have failed to get out of your life. Maybe addictions. Here we, run, we learn from Esther that prayer and fasting breaks every heart, every work of the enemy. And so my, my brother and my sister, I would like to encourage you. Start praying. Start fasting. Because through that it prepares you for the missions that you have in life today. Life is not going to be easy. But with Christ and prayer and fasting, all things are possible. Some of the things I would like to present to you today that you should pray for. Pray for the church and fast for the church in China. Pray for the church in Uganda. We are faced by a lot of accusation. We are faced by many things happening in the church in Uganda today. Pray for our archbishop. Pray for the clergy. Fast for your, those leaders in the church. It's very important that we take prayer and fasting as an important thing. God of justice, we see him seen through the story of Esther. He sent they are sent to exile, the Jews, they are mistreated, but God does not forget them. And through Esther, they are able to overcome. So today, my brother and my sister, I encourage you, pray fast. There is power in prayer and fasting. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this word that has come to us through Esther encouraging us to fast. Lord, I pray for my friends who are struggling with fasting and prayer. The Lord, you stir out, you stir their spirit to come, to get into prayer and fasting. Lord, I also ask that you move with us even as we start this year. The Lord, you, you send us out so that we can be ambassadors who are ready to teach your word. I pray the Lord will take time to reflect on your word, but also will take time to pray and fast because we are on a mission, a mission that you handed over to us through Matthew 28, that we make disciples of all nations. So my father, I pray the Lord you today encourage someone on this platform that they will learn from uh, Esther's story of praying and fasting. And indeed, there is power in prayer and fasting. I pray the Lord you bless each one of us in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.